Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to go over how to make your avatar UI visible only to you. So this comes up a lot when you make avatar UI. First of all, I need to explain what an avatar UI is. I hope this isn't a tutorial on avatar UI. People have made all sorts of fantastic systems with it, but this isn't one on that. If you'd like to see one on that, do let me know. I can show you some stuff. So um, avatar UIs usually turn on or turn off shape keys or, or clothing, accessories, etc. on an avatar. And it's often the case that you want to make it so that that UI only appears for the user who's wearing the avatar, or in some cases, only the user that owns the avatar. So that's what we're going to set up today. To help us, I've provided a very simple example here in this uh, video, which I've made, which is uh, a checkbox to the right here. And this checkbox is parented to me. So when I move, it moves with me. And uh, when I enable this checkbox, it just makes my right eyebrow raise and I can turn off this checkbox here like that. So what we're gonna do is make it so that this checkbox is only visible for me. Let's go ahead and do this. First thing I'm gonna do is show you what I've sort of structured things out component and slot wise for this checkbox. It's very simple, like I said, but it will show you some sort of good things to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and inspect the checkbox here. I've got my developer tooltip equipped, so I'm going to hit secondary and then open inspector. And then we're going to go up one and you'll see that I've got this avatar UI slot. This is parented to my avatar root. If you're building an avatar UI, you might want to parent it to somewhere else, like your head, your hips, your spine, wherever you want. It doesn't matter. It will work for uh, anywhere it's positioned. This is just going to change the, um, the visibility state of it, not where it's positioned or anything like that. So what we want to happen is that if um, the person looking at the avatar or in the world is not me, then we want this box here to be unchecked. So what we're going to use to do this is a bunch of components. We're going to be using avatar user reference assigner and values override. This is a nice way of doing it because it means that anyone that's wearing the avatar will automatically be factored into the system and uh, you won't need to do any logics as well. Um, logic is great, but sometimes it's cool when you get a way of just doing components and this is quite simple. So let's go ahead and do it. At the bottom here of this avatar UI slot, I'm going to go to attach component. I'm going to attach the values override first and talk about that one. I do have a dedicated video on values override, which is linked in the video description, but I talk about it more in terms of world. For example, the mirror button below here that turns on and off the mirror uses values override, but in a slightly different way. Let's go ahead and uh, set it up for this system though. So we're going to go to transform, drivers, and then right at the bottom here, value user override, and then select values override bool. That creates this object. Um, I will go over a few things. I won't go over everything though, because that's featured in the uh, overview video that's linked in the description. But values override allows us to override values based on a user. And so what we're going to do is override this active state. So what we need to do is drag active and drop it into the target property of the values override. The checkbox will disappear at this point. Don't worry about that. We're now going to add a uh, override the bag manually. Bag is sort of a list. It's just another name for a list. Um, there are various types of lists in computing and a uh, bag just happens to be one that's used in ES. Yes. So we're gonna hit add here, which will add an item to the list. And what this is, is it's a, an override for a particular user. And we're gonna set this user up uh, automatically in a moment. But first of all, what we need to do is ensure that for this user that we're setting up, that the override is on. So we're going to check this box here. So what this is going to do is once the user is set here, we'll do that in just a moment, it will ensure that an override is created, which will turn this active checkbox on via this values override. Also ensure that persistent overrides is checked. If this is unchecked, you can have problems when you save the avatar. Let's go ahead and add that value, um, avatar value user, user reference assigner. So I'll get the, uh, go to attach component, users, common avatar system, Avatar user reference assigner. Avatar user reference assigner will assign a user reference to a um, any user references that which are in its references list uh, when the avatar is equipped. So what we need to do here is add an item to this references list and then drag the word user, not the larger user here, the little user here, the one that's uh, indented a little bit more, from here and drop it into that reference list and you'll see it's synced up here and it's in that item. This is now hooked up and ready to go, but to test it, what we'll need to do is unequip this avatar and then re-equip it without losing it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn to the right here. I'm going to go ahead and spawn in another avatar from uh, my inventory. So that will be. Where is it? There it is. This is a headless avatar I used for a, an ancient Rome lesson at one point. So I'm going to go and equip that. So I'm in this avatar now. Hop back in. Equip, and now you'll see that that checkbox has reappeared. Let's take a look at the components so I can show you why that's happened. So I'm going to go ahead and inspect the checkbox again. We'll go up to the avatar UI slot and we'll take a look. So what happened here is when I equipped the avatar, the avatar user reference assigned a fired and it set my user reference onto this user here. 
which fills in all these other details. That's another misconception people have sometimes is that they have to fill these in. You don't have to. Just uh, get this filled in with an actual user reference and you'll, uh, you'll have, it'll be fine. Once this is filled in, it's saying override user probable prime with this value on. And uh, that value happens to be the targeted to the active field of my avatar UI, which is meaning the checkbox is now here. If someone else was in the world, they would not be able to see this checkbox. And if I save this avatar and gave it out, not that I would do that, but if I save this avatar and gave it out to other people, then um, if they equipped it, they would be the only person to see the checkbox too. So that's how you do basic um, UI that's just local to you. This does come up in um, other places too, like games and things like that. For example, over in um, Laserbeam, which is my entry for the MMC, I've got a local only um, health bar that appears there that uses a similar system to this. I can't remember if it exactly uses the exact flow, but pretty much the same thing. You can do this setup entirely in Logix as well, but I wanted to show the component way because it's nice and simple and it keeps things um, quick. And it also means it works for anyone that equips that avatar. So if you get a public avatar, that's the way to do it. If you have any questions on this, do let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.